The standard injection moulding configuration is a fixed half which is obviously bolted to the machine and a moving half which is free to open and close the mould and then usually embedded in here there will be another plate which is also free to move in and out and this is the ejector plate which will have a series of pins sticking out and these pins go through into the actual cavity and ideally come flush with the cavity wall so that when the mould opens this side comes away the part ideally gets stuck in this side and then this ejector plate comes forward and knocks them out and if you look on a lot of plastic components on one side or the other and on this one it's on this side and I can see here a little circular dot there and there's another one here and another one here and a couple here and here and these are basically the ejector pin marks so that when the mould is opened it's pulled it that way and then it's knocked them out. Now obviously there's going to be some of the cavity on the fixed half and the plastic of course comes through from the back on a big sprue which would be broken off or maybe dead gated on the side uh, but that's the standard technique and on a part like this which has a substantially flat side that's not too difficult to do because you'd simply put your parting line if this is the the molded component your parting line would go here so all of this is in the moving half and when the mold opens the tug of war this side is going to win so that gives you the reliability that you're always going to be pulling the part this side and then it's a simple case of eject it and repeat the cycle now this hanger is a little bit harder to mold for a start they've got a bit of an angle going on here so the mould is actually a little bit more sophisticated but from a tool making perspective I can get this to focus you can see that the parting line on here is pretty much dead center and that's because they've got a rounded edge and if you think about that if you've got an edge that is rounded like this putting the parting line here is going to create an undercut so although that will guarantee the moulding will pull this way it's going to make it difficult to eject the thing, especially in a rigid material like this polystyrene. So in order to get around that problem and retain the central parting line, what they've got on the back here are some ejector pins with a couple of tram lines across them. And these are grab pins. You'll also see a kind of crosshatch waffling pattern occasionally being used. But the idea is that the plastic will over mold onto that pin and just hold it in place so that when the mould opens you're almost guaranteed that it's going to pull across on this side and they've got quite a few of these in the moulding actually if I zoom out slightly you can perhaps see there's one here, here and a very small one in the tips here and the same on this one and this one and then at the end here where the hanger is uh, somewhere in here there, just get it in the light, there is a plain ejector pin there so they're obviously not using grabs on this part but these three long arms on this hanger. They've uh, deliberately used these grab pins just to make sure that it comes away on the right side and that allows them to get the, uh, the rounded profile with a, a central parting line. Uh, they've also got some ridging on this side mainly just to make it a little bit stiffer and more robust and those will also help but these are radius as well so Bolton, belt and braces I suspect when they designed this thing but uh, that's what they've done. They've put some little grab pins in here just to make sure that they're going to get this thing off on the right side every time without having to go in and peel them off manually. There are a couple of other solutions to this problem, one of which I've already alluded to. If you were going to produce a part with rounded edges, you could deliberately put your parting line slightly higher up. And what this does obviously is creates that undercut scenario where your plastic is going to be trapped in this area. So depending on how far up you go, I mean you could even go right away to the top of the moulding so that all of this area here is then undercut and you can be pretty sure that that's going to hold the part into this moving side and then you just need some fairly robust ejector pins to knock the thing out. The problem with this is you've got to form that undercut and obviously you can't just come in with a tool and cut that, not unless you've got something like a rounded bit which can come in downwards and then go sideways to take it out, kind of like a, a dovetail cutter would be a, another way of doing it. Uh, but that depends on the geometry you're trying to form, whether or not you can actually get in uh, and add that. Plus, uh, you've got to get it just right, because if the material is quite rigid and you go overboard here, you might not be able to push the thing out without damaging the part. 
and if you do it in a softer material you've got a good chance of it working but then depending on how wide it is you've obviously got some uh, stiction going on on the top surface and because it's a soft pliable material that stiction on the fixed half may be enough to pull the thing out anyway so that can be done but it's not 100% reliable another way that is sometimes used if that's the the cavity and that's your parting line and that's the other side of the cavity you can put a very small mushroom pin in and then your plastic obviously is going to fill in these areas under the mushroom and that again will key it in uh, and then you just put some strategically located ejector pins on the back to pop it up over that pin um, these pins would generally be screwed in rather than actually machined into the mould so this gives you a way of fairly easily taking these out and modifying the geometry to get what you want so you'd probably start with something with uh, a very very slight undercut and then just take it more and more down if necessary to get more and more and you basically keep going until you get the effect you want so this is a, an alternative system and I believe you can just buy mushroom pins but they're not terribly hard to make anyway but uh, then you've obviously got holes in your moulding and there's always trade-offs here but there are a couple of other ways of getting around the issue rather than using the waffle pattern or the, the cross pattern ejector pins but uh, I'm going to see if I can do a slightly different technique for something that I've got coming up fairly soon so my idea is to use a bolt basically as a mushroom pin because the head has got a mushroom on it and I could play around with that on the lathe and maybe chamfer it if it's biting too hard turn it down a little bit if there's too much of an overhang I've also got the socket on the end which the plastic will mould into giving me a bit more surface area and I can simply drill some holes and embed these bolts into the mould and I think that would probably work quite well I might need to play around with the geometry to get it working exactly the way I want but nevertheless that's uh, one option another option would be to turn it the other way around and actually use the thread itself because obviously there's a small undercut here and because it's not very deep it's definitely going to be easier to rip the plastic off that the uh, question is whether that thread is going to be sufficient to actually pull the moulding the way I want but I can always embed more of these if necessary uh, so that's another way uh, of doing it instead of using the head and then thought well I could actually get a little bit cleverer still by simply using grub screws because not only do I have the thread to act as an undercut I still retain the socket on the end so I can mould into that or I could put it in the other way around and have the plane head so there's quite a few variations here just by using the thread itself or worst case scenario the whole cap head bolt here and use that as a mushroom pin so that's what I'm planning on experimenting with and I've already prepared a couple of plates here so this is going to be my moving half with just some bolt holes to hold it into the mould it's a six millimeter wide channel about three millimeters deep 360 mil long some vents and a couple of guide pins and then the uh, matching fixed half uh, obviously the holes to take the guide pins to keep it all aligned and then these are the feed points and I'm going to get a small sprue from these so that is going to tend to try and pull the molding onto this side but all of the geometry is in the moving half so that's going to tend to pull the molding this way so the question is in this tug of war what's going to win are the, the sprues going to pull it off onto the fixed half or is the cavity going to pull it off onto the moving half or is it going to tick tock between the two I don't know until I try it so before I start drilling holes and putting rub screws in to try and pull it one way or the other I think we'll just give this a quick spin see what happens and uh, then assess the damage and figure out where I'm going to put these to see if I can make it consistently do what I want okay place your bets which side do we think it's going to stick on and it is sticking on the feed side although as you can see here it has had a go at pulling it across so that suggests if I can stick some grab pins where these feed points are here and here then we might just get away with it okay this is what we're getting at the moment and you can see quite a long sprue there from the gate it's about 3.5 millimeters wide maybe I don't know 10 to 12 millimeters long and that's obviously enough 
to uh, get a purchase on that and pull it off onto the fixed half and the other one at this end. Uh, because we know that that will grab and pull, you might be wondering, well, why don't I just put those on the other side and make some grab pins that way? And the problem with that is occasionally they break off. And when that happens on the feed side, it's not too much of a problem because the next cycle will just blow it out. But obviously if I was using that technique as a grab pin on this side, if that breaks off, that hole is now filled in and it's not going to work anymore. So that's why I'm having to use... Uh, the idea of putting a screw in there so that it's raised up and can't come out. So anyway, I've drilled and fitted one of these grub screws near to the lower gate point. Uh, there's not a huge amount of clearance around there. It's a 4mm screw in a 6mm channel, but I think the plastic will flow around it. And we'll see if that works and uh, grabs the thing and pulls it off on the right side. OK, let's see what happens. I've sprayed the moving half, so that means it should stick on that side. But hopefully the grab pin will be enough to pull it off on that side, maybe. Oh, look at that. Well, that has actually pulled off over the pin, but it definitely caught it on that side. Let's see that repeats. And it does. Brilliant. And look at that. It's sticking exactly where that pin is. Oh. And here is some of the resulting mouldings. You can see here how it's trying to grab it on this pin, but then there's a kink where it's pulled across that way. And it's done that because here is our little over moulded pin. And it's a little bit protruding, but you can see there that it's grabbed and bent it that way. So it's got bent there where it's trapped on the moving half, and then it's got bent there where it's trapped on the fixed half. So that does seem to be working and this one's quite interesting as well because you can see that the uh, the pin has grabbed it here this is focused and then the sprue has pulled it that way and so there's that little bulge out where the tug of war has taken place so it looks like it's working and I think if I put a few more pins in to give it a little bit more area to key into that should work quite reliably right. Here we go again. I've now got two grab pins at the bottom and two grab pins at the top. And with a bit of look, this should pull everything across onto this half. And it has. Now, yeah, I can still just about get it out. But that is actually working. You can see how that's pulled that sprue, and that's pulled that sprue. So that seems to be working. Looks like you just need more pins. Let's give that a good spray of mould release, a bit of silicone, and see what difference that makes. Still kept it. This does make getting them out a little trickier. But that's done exactly the same thing. Broken off the sprue, but that's not a problem. So that does work. And it makes me think that if I had a pin directly behind the sprue, that might just keep that flat. So I'll give that a go next. And there we go again. Well that's pretty reliable. So yeah, progress. Okay, more grab pins. I've got one right opposite 
the sprue at the bottom, left the top as it was, one either side, and then I've put another pin on the fixed half just to rip it out in the centre. So that should give me something to get in and rip the whole moulding out. Let's see how this works at all. Look at that. Wonderful. Well, it's broken the sprue off, but that is a lot flatter with that pin behind it. And that's the grab pin on the other half, which is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And then that's how I left it at the other end, so that's still bowing out slightly because of the sprue. But otherwise, that's working pretty well. So when this comes out, we should see it do that again and snap off. And look at that, perfect. One more time. Looks like a charm. Well, I think that concludes a relatively successful experiment. That's the original configuration where it was simply the sprue pulling them off onto the fixed half. And uh, I could obviously have put the runner on the other side to shorten this sprue, and I could perhaps have put a bit of taper on it as well, which would have helped. But uh, I wanted to test it in the worst case scenario. So uh, that was going either side, it was a little bit random and spraying the mould certainly helped shuffle it from one side to the other, but that's no good in a production environment, you want it to be pretty consistent. So then that was the one with the single pin, uh, pretty close to that lower gate sprue and obviously the sprue on this end was holding it so I was getting that twisting motion as it came off and uh, because the mould only opens 130 millimetres uh, that's 250 so obviously that would key in and go like that which it did uh, and then these are the two uh, sprues when I added the pins behind them one was I think 15 millimeters either side and the other one was 10 millimeters either side and you can see the difference that that makes uh, obviously the closer they are to the sprue uh, the greater the angle that you get there so that's not ideal getting that kind of bump in the molding and then of course when we went to putting a pin directly behind the sprue, that straightened that up nicely. I'm not entirely sure whether I needed the two on either side, but uh, I'll worry about that at a later date when I try this again. And uh, that one's still got a bit of a bump in it because I didn't add the pin behind the sprue. Uh, and then in the center here, there is another grab pin on the other side, which is uh, about 100, 110 millimeters apart. And as we saw, when the mold opened, it opens a couple of centimetres extra, so that then clicked off because these held it more firmly than the single one there. So that was pretty good. I think I should use this technique in future. So there's the three pins I added on that end and the two on that end. And then there's the one that I put in the middle on the fixed half. So all in all, that's quite a good technique. And uh, I shall definitely be using this in future and possibly improve on it even further. But uh, not bad for a quick experiment.